Today we are talking knots that are used on boats on a regular basis and also I've added in a few extras that aren't normally used but are extremely handy to know. So stay with me until the end of the video and um, we'll be going through how to make these knots and how to use them. Okay, let's get to it. I'm not at the boat at the moment so I've jury rigged up a, a cleat here. Um, so. I'm going to do the cleat hitch. So one of the most important um, knots available for a sailor for when you're tying up your boat. So your line to tie off onto a cleat, you step ashore and you bring your line from the boat around the furthest point, finish off your round turn over the horn and then you twist away from the leading line Job done. Your line is coming in off the boat. This is your working end. This is the near side. Nearest furthest. So nearest goes to the furthest horn. Around, complete your round turn. Over the horn. And then you put your locking knot on by twisting away from the near line, the near side, and pull through. Everything is secure. When I started sailing as a teenager with Glenans, the first, or one of the first ones I learned was the bowling. So you create number six in your line. You bring the bitter end, bring the bitter end up, the rabbit comes up the hole around the tree and back down the hole. Your lines, your lines are running parallel with each other and you tighten up your knot. And there you have your bowline. So a quick way of doing a bowline is you have the majority of your line over your left hand you sweep towards you in a loop catch the standing line bring it through then feed uh, the end of the line through the loop hold on to that and cinch down on your knot and you have a bowler very quick and if you have to tie it around something for in this, in this example I'm going to use my chair I can have this pretzel bit prepared even before I go to tie it on and I have a perfectly tied chair. Another variation instead of um, the standard bowling is a double bowling. It is a more secure variation. In this case we have two loops formed, one on top of the other, like a coil. Then you feed your line up through as you would for a standard bowling, tighten down, tighten down your knot, and there is your double bowling for extra security. The clove hitch, often used for uh, doing a quick tie up of your fenders until you can adjust the height. Okay, I'm going to pretend this red line here is. A lifeline and we're putting our fenders on the side of the boat. We might have to adjust something that can be moved quickly. So clove hitch is the perfect solution. So we bring it down. This end would be under the weight of the, the fender and we feed it back up through itself so it locks like that.
Round turn, two half hitches. So we bring our line down and we complete a full round turn. And then we put in our half hitch. And our second half hitch. Make sure both the half hitches run in the same direction so that they bite up on each other instead of loosening out if they were in the opposite direction. A rolling hitch knot is a sliding knot and basically roll it over on itself and whichever side you want uh, the pressure to come onto is the side you put the more rounds on. So we go round. In this case, I'm just going to go around twice, but you could go around three or four times on the right, and then you swap over to the left hand side and bring the line up inside. That line there. So it's kind of like a clove hitch and it pulls up that way. A rolling hitch is an extremely useful knot to have in your knowledge banks. Uh, hopefully you don't have to use it that often but if you end up getting a line riding up on your winch and jamming, um, the rolling hitch can be applied to the line in order to take the pressure off so that the jam can be taken out of the winch because the, the line is then depressurized closer to the winch. Take your line around the object you want to tie it onto and go around two, three, even four times, it doesn't matter, but average is, is about two times around. And you bring it across to the opposite side of the standing line and we feed the working end up through the line that has come across as a crossover and it basically ends up looking like a clove hitch with a few extra turns on it and then this can be used to pull to take the the pressure off your winch line you don't use it very often hopefully um in sailing but um it's a good one to know for attaching two lines of the same diameter you use the reef or square knot so it's left over right right over left You end up with a very neat, tidy knot. Comes together like that. Now, preferably you'd have a bit longer of a tail. So I'll redo that again. Left over right, twist, right over left. Perfect. Ideally, a stopper knot should not be on the very end of a line in case it needs to be pulled um, back. So give yourself about two hands width before you put your stopper knot in. This is going to be the figure of eight. So we create a bite. We twist it around on itself. And feed the bitter end through itself. And as you can see, there is the figure of eight developing as you pull in. And there's your figure of eight, stop or not. To connect two lines of different diameters, we use the sheet bend. So how you make that is quite simple. You make a bite in the thicker rope. You pass the narrow rope or line up and up through the center of the eye 
over the top of the short side and bring it underneath the long side of the heavy line and then feed it in under like so and pull tight and that is your sheet bend. So the double sheet bend is very similar setup to the original sheet bend. You have your bite and your short end is facing away from you and then you get your narrow line, pass it up through the eye, over the top of the short end, bring it around and tuck it under itself here and instead of finishing off like you would with a normal sheet bend you bring this end of the line around again and then tuck it in underneath so you have your two coils neat and tidy and then you can sync it up and we have a neat tidy line very tidy, very strong, and it's easy, even after having a heavy load on it, it is easy to break out the knot and dismantle. The same as, as a bowline would be easy to break open just by bending the spine. Another knot for tying two lines of the same diameter together is called a zeppelin bend. And it is considered a stronger or less likely to come apart knot than a reef knot. So how you make that is you put a six in one side of the, the line and you put a nine in the other side and then six goes on top of the nine, like so, and eat. <laughs> all fingers and thumbs me, and then we take the working end of the six and bring it up and over the top, then we get the working end of the nine and bring it down through the hole. And then we tighten. So, get it all cinched in together, and we've got ourselves a zeppelin knot. And it won't pull apart. Yet, if you need to, it's very easy to break the back on it and get out of it.